Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning, Mill City Presbyterian Church. Uh, we uh, uh, looking forward uh, this morning to welcoming uh, Reverend Dr. Tracy Ray. It's uh, Dr. Ray's first time with us, and um, uh, I, I would point out that he brought his wife and son and granddaughter as well, and so we want to be sure that they are welcome. Um, uh, Dr. Ray is going to share a little bit about himself when, when he gets up, so I, I won't uh, uh, take any more time with that. Um, want to welcome those who may be viewing the service online as well. And uh, if you have uh, Bibles uh, available that you would like to note uh, the scripture for this morning uh, that Dr. Ray will be uh, uh, sharing from, uh, it is from uh, Micah uh, chapter 6, uh, Matthew chapter 18, and 1 Corinthians. Uh, chapters 1 and chapter 15. So, um, we'll make that note. Um, announcements. Um, I want to announce that next Sunday there will be a congregational meeting. And uh, um, there, there will be several things uh, shared uh, during that time. And so we we encourage all who are able to please be in attendance. Um, anything more to be said about that, Bruce Dan? Session members? Well, it would just be right after the church. Right, right, immediately after, immediately after the worship service. Okay. Yeah. And you don't have to be a member to, to come to the congregation meeting. It's just, it's a, mainly just an informational sharing of, of the year. Of, that we've just had and, and what may be in the future. So, no privilege. All right. Thank you. Thanks. That, that's important. Yeah, thank you. Um, are there other announcements this morning? Other announcements? Hi. Alice. Okay. I have a report from the fishing committee. Um, during the month of January, the food bank. We served 118 families, 409 individuals. There were 84 volunteers and 154 hours for everybody's volunteers. I think that's awesome. Um, again, the, the mission of the church, which is to work in the community, and uh, we're endeavoring to do that. So, um, other announcements? Yeah. So we had our first vacuum meals on wheels began service on Thursday and it was a huge success. It was a lot of fun, we had a lot of people there and everyone was just chatting it up and having a good time. So it was a great success. Wonderful, wonderful. See in person senior meals uh up and running again. Um, and so, to those who may have been helping, thank you. Uh, for those who continue to serve uh, uh, Meals on Wheels and take meals to, uh, to the community, thank you. I'm presuming, though, more volunteers might still be Absolutely. used? Absolutely. So, um, uh, in-person meals, Tuesdays and Thursdays, if you're interested in volunteering, 10 o'clock? Yeah. 10 till? Probably about 1.30. Don't let it scare you. 10 until it works done. Right. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. That's, 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 that's so neat. I think I, I mentioned when that was first talked about a month or two ago, resuming. Um, my, my recollection, and I wasn't here, uh, but senior meals uh, at the church here began about 1975. Uh, so it, it's, it's, there's a long tradition, and uh, it's wonderful that, uh, that we're in person. We were told for our, our section, whatever 
our counties, which is Lynn and Bedford, some different ones. We have the largest dining room. We have the most people that come really? to the dining part of it. Jim and I read about how many were there Thursday? Oh, I, over 20. I don't say, what do you say? I think yeah. so. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Other announcements? Well, would you join me then in our opening prayer? Holy God, as always, we give you thanks for the opportunity to worship as part of your family and in this special place. When we gather to worship, we are reminded that we are blessed and we are loved. We give thanks for your presence and we ask your blessing on our time of worship and on our time of fellowship. Amen. <laughs>
time as a church family that we share our celebrations and concerns. And uh, if I may be allowed to start, uh, I've, I've been told that my absence was noticed. I, I've been gone a couple of weeks. And I, I would share, I, I had the opportunity to go to California to visit with, with friends. And, and I would, would um, start by sharing the blessing of friends. Um, the folks that, that I met with uh, were friends of Elaine and mine from 50 years ago. And uh, it was just, it was great uh, to be together. We met uh, the second part of my, my sharing. Um, it is it's both a celebration and a concern. Where we were meeting was in the heart of one of the areas that was hit by floods um, uh, the last few weeks uh, in the Santa Cruz Mountains. And uh, if you remember seeing some of the footage that, that was on the national news, the Capitola Pier that was washed away, it's a severe flooding. Um, when I was there, it, there was still, there were roads that were still blocked from landslides, uh, roads that had been washed away, getting around was a little bit of a, a challenge at times. It, it, it was a reminder of, of both Indeed, uh, challenges, uh, circumstances, uh, disasters that that um, people are facing uh, all over the world, and and uh, and we're no strangers to that either uh, here in the camp. And so, prayers for those who who are are dealing with such challenges, but also a little bit of a celebration of the resiliency of people um, to work through some of those things. And I witnessed a little bit of that. And uh, so I, I, I shared that with you. Are there other celebrations and concerns for this morning? Becky. Uh, closing friend of mine, Randy Cecilia, passed away last week. Um, and he's planting some electric stimulators. So, first for her, she's supposed to be very painful for her recent couple weeks. Back, back surgery. Back surgery, and then she had one of those five pounds for yeah. several months. And her name again is? Judy Gregory. Judy. Prayers for Judy, back surgery. One of the friends that, that I was there to, to witness was having back surgery. And, and hers was, uh, they were going to inject cement into her spine to try to stabilize that. And I never got the clarification. I didn't know if that meant like glue or or like what rocks and water or like <laughs> I, what they're doing these things. So implants. Alright. Prayers for Judy. Other uh, other celebrations or concerns. Ruth. Uh, as far as I know, Carol is having a procedure on Tuesday. Thursday. Thursday? Thursday. Okay. Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Carol is having a procedure this week, uh, and, and that will be on Thursday. And so, prayers for Carol. Um, indeed, she's she's hopeful for this. Uh, so, please keep her. In, in. Others, Cindy. Pray for Sam. She's having chemo again on Monday. Tomorrow. Okay, Sandra, Sandra Cooper, mm -hmm. uh, for chemo this week. For all those who are dealing with, with chronic illnesses of, of a variety, and, and, and uh, certainly cancer is the one that we're the most familiar with. So, prayers for Sam. Others? Another one you Yes. Um, JM time um, continues to increase in the number of kids that are coming for that. Um, this week we had 42, I believe. 40, anyway, over 40. So um, it's really awesome. So, and we can always use volunteers for jam time. It's fun hanging out with those kiddos and yeah. saying and that sort of thing. Yeah. Just, just watching them and their interest in what's going on and what they're doing. So, a real praise for that. Fantastic. Tracy, that jam time is Jesus and me. And uh, it's, it's um, uh, we used to call it release time. Now, uh, kids are uh, released from school uh, one day a week, and uh, about 40 um, are accompanied 
for a, an, hour, an hour of time in the sanctuary here. And um, it, it's, it's uh, there is another church uh, who is involved in doing that. The pastor there uh, comes over and, and his wife uh, leads the singing. And, uh, but, and, and we have several folks who are helping with that. So, um, and that was absent uh, for a couple of years because of COVID. And uh, it started again just three or four weeks ago again. So we're really glad to have that back. So, thanks for that. Uh, Becky. Prices to the library volunteers. They were actually open for in person business this week. Um, the community library is housed in, in our education wing over here. Oh. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, and uh, one of our members is the head of that, that board and, and uh, some other volunteers and so. And that was also closed for uh, COVID and during that. So that is just up and uh, getting started again. So we're really thankful for that. All kinds of things getting started again, isn't that neat? Um, Diane? Uh, first, for my sister and brother-in-law, um, they're having a hospital bed brought in for him. He's just not being involved. And that's uh, John Sharon. Yeah, so prayers for Diane's sister Sharon and her husband John, and, uh, and the challenges that they're facing with some health issues. So, uh, and as always, when we pray for somebody with health issues, we pray for the family and, and those who are caregiving as well. So, thank you. Others? Well, let us uh, continue this time of sharing with uh, some sign of prayer. Shall we pray? Holy God, you have heard our prayers shared aloud, and you know the silent prayers in our hearts. We have so many joys and blessings that, that we often forget um, to acknowledge that to which we need to be grateful to you. <clears throat> But we also have concerns and even sorrows, and for these, we ask from you whatever is needed. We ask for healing, we ask for discernment, we ask for patience, we ask for direction. Above all, we ask for your continued presence in our lives as we go about the daily business of loving you and sharing your love with all whom we be. We do this uh, remembering to share in the prayer that Jesus taught us when he said, uh, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we pray for our debts. It is the time that we have an opportunity to share in our morning hour.
in service to you. Amen. in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is wonderful to be here today. I love this place. This is like a little bit of Americana right here. <laughs> I'm telling you, this place opened on time and it's been open for over 100 years. That is amazing. And as I walk about and talk to some of you, I got the clear picture that your ministry far exceeds your attendance today. That is amazing. From children to meals on wheels, you hit the whole range of society in your ministry and outreach from this place. And so that warms my heart. I love to hear that. I have a great appreciation for church tools, baptism, the altar, the role that they play in our spiritual lives, the pulpit. I love the pulpit. And why was the pulpit always so grand and big like that? It's because people firmly believed that the word of the Lord needed to be elevated. And that was not braggadocious. It was just a sincere appreciation for God's word. So I love this place. I even, I even pulled out this old one. Woo! <laughs> I could not find a date for it. I imagine that this is the original Bible that came with the place. Built by timber from this area. My goodness, what a story. I love it. <clears throat> well, I am a pastor and theologian for Point of Light Theological Society. We're a small group with contacts in Hawaii, Arizona, and here in Oregon. I'm also a licensed clinical Christian counselor. There's not much frills to me, but when I say that I'm, I greet you in the name of the Lord, that's where the power is. I'm not famous. You don't know me. I'm not your pastor. I'm not even claiming to be a self-proclaimed prophet. I'm just simply bringing you the word of the Lord today. 
And I'm not using a sermon that I'm pulling out of my back pocket. I'm not using a sermon that I wrote for some other body of people. I prayerfully entered into this message with you in mind before I even knew you. I was praying for you. So whatever you, uh, whatever resonates in your life today, whatever resonates in the words that you hear today, those are literally the words God has for you. We're going to hear this word from the Old Testament, the Gospel lesson, and the Epistle lesson. And I would like to read them for you. You don't need to stand, but I understand if you want to. The Old Testament lesson is Micah 6, 8. He has shown you and told you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Our gospel lesson is Matthew 18, 20, where there are two or three gathered in my name, I am there among you. Our epistle lesson today, 1 Corinthians 1, 9, God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Our journey today begins as a mere three steps today. But each step we take has transformative power to change our world. <clears throat> our Old Testament lesson uh, highlights, the, I mean, the three steps for our, the lesson today is highlighted in the Old Testament. The Gospel lesson kind of brings clarity to that. Do you, do you mind if I step down here? Or would you prefer me to elevate that down? Okay. <laughs> So the gospel lesson is meant to bring clarity to what we're talking about, and the epistle lesson reveals the assurance that it's God working through us. So if you only had one verse in the entire Bible, that great big book up there, if you scaled it all down and had just one verse, that's all you could use. Micah 6 8 would be the only verse you need to live in. That one verse sums it up for us. That is the most important verse in the Bible, especially for us today. So, let's get right to it. Three steps for the journey with God today is step one, do justice. Step two, love mercy. And step three, walk humbly with your God. It doesn't seem too difficult, but we live in crazy times. People are spending more energy walking away from God rather than walking in the light as He is in the light. The pathway to peace in your life, your life with God, is in these three steps. My granddaughter is with me today. Her name is Stella. And she allowed me to use one of her <coughs> coloring books and what she has learned to do is color and but then she went one step further and she went to the back of the page and she started seeing the imprint underneath there and so she would draw those lines not really knowing where they're going until she was done and then she saw the whole picture and this is exactly the kind of thing that we want to do following God's blueprint for our lives, we, and when we follow it, we see the bigger picture. And that's where we're going today. Step one, do justice. The backdrop of Micah's message to people Israel <coughs> in the Old Testament um, was that Israel had transgressions and they were getting way out of control. And God had an indictment against his people Israel because they were, he said, it says in Micah, they were making them crooked. They were making crooked out of all that was straight. Micah in chapter 6, verse 12. Your rich men are full of violence. Your inhabitants speak lies. 
and their tongue is full of deceit in their mouth. This sounds very similar to our days, of harsh violence, deceit. We have mass shootings, we have rioting, and we have a barrage of misinformation. Bar you, you know, that, I want to digress for a second. The barrage of misinformation. There is this artificial intelligence program called Chat GBT. It's, it will write research papers. It's the thinking computer. It's thinking on its own. And it won't be long, and guys like me are not going to be necessary because I can be replaced by a computer, even preaching. Because I put in John 3.16, I just keyed that in, and I wanted to see what it would come up with. came up with a full sermon. With, with end notes, bibliography. I was so impressed. And it was spot on. So, let me back up a little bit. When I say I preach you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, therein lies the difference. The computer cannot meet with you in the name of Jesus Christ. That's person to person, spirit to spirit. And that's what's happening today. So, we understand that some bad things were happening and the news of our times kind of parallels that. But the news of Micah says, they covet fields, this is in chapter two, they covet fields and seize them in houses and take them away. They oppress a man in his house, a man in his inheritance. What, what is in the news today for us? The war in Ukraine. Homes are being destroyed, schools are being destroyed, even hospitals are being destroyed and people are suffering under war crimes. The truth of Micah's message to Israel was that even nature itself would bear witness to, to what he is saying. It says, here are you mountains, the indictment of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of earth, for the Lord has an indictment against his people, and he will contend with Israel. The news of our times is a global warning of unprecedented natural disasters. Even, even nature is calling out. We seem to be living in a time when we can't fix all that's being destroyed. And we have become kind of skeptics in that we, we really don't want to hear a negative story. We're becoming numb to the crookedness in our world as we shrink back in apathy. And I don't say that as a judgment to you, because obviously, your testimony is great. I'm hearing the work that you're doing. But you understand that in society and in general, we don't want to hear a negative story. And we, and we, we kind of have apathy when it comes to standing up for things. This was the same sentiment that Israel had. They said to Michael, when should we preach about such things? Disgrace will not overcome us. And they were convinced. But like Israel in the Old Testament, we don't get to plead ignorance. We know. And this leads us to the question, what are we supposed to do to turn this mess around? We start by participating in the first step, doing justice. The actions of our daily life do matter. In order to arrive at truth, you have to be looking in the right direction. Justice begins and ends with God. When our eyes are fixed on God, then we know right from wrong, and we're able to confront sin boldly through righteousness. Step two. <clears throat> Step two is love and mercy. Mercy and kindness seem to be in short supply. This is important because it's foundational to the, the faith that we have to belong to. It is by grace, the mercy of God, that we have been saved through faith. Jesus sets us the example of how to do justice and love mercy when we're dealing with someone who has wronged us or sinned against us. He says that we need to go to that person. This is in chapter 18 of our gospel lesson. He says we should go to that person and meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. And if they have a change of heart, then we've gained a breath. He says if they don't, then you take someone else and you go to that person 
who offended you, and you try to work things out with that person. If it still doesn't get worked out, then you take the whole church with you to confront the issue. Jesus is saying, let's get everybody to solve to try to work this out. <clears throat> Jesus is suggesting that we put an awful lot of effort into the practice of showing mercy and kindness. <clears throat> it's not getting even. It's trying to work things out and going the extra mile. And his promise is that he's with us when we show mercy, joining with others, <coughs> excuse me, to extend kindness and forgiveness. <coughs> I'm not getting choked up, I'm just getting choked up. <laughs> I, I have a I'm sorry. Jesus says, well, when you have two or more gathered into my name, I'm there with you. So we have this assurance that he is with us and that there is unity when we uh, come together to resolve problems. But Jesus does more than just show us how to love mercy. Jesus is the love that's in the unity that we experience. It's Jesus, not a computer program, not, not polls, not statistics, not numbers, but people engaged with Christ. The obstacles, the obstacle to showing mercy is fear. The use of fear tactics is used by many to drive a wedge into unity. <clears throat> fear creates a us-them mentality. Fear casts blame and not mercy. The use of fear to incite people into action very rarely accomplishes any acts of love. Step two of love and mercy is a participatory act and we're going to get our hands dirty. People may reject our expressions of kindness and forgiveness and love, but Jesus is saying, try again. Stick with it. For I am with you. Knowing that Christ is with us and that we have received his mercy, and forgiveness, we are led into step three, walk humbly with your God. This too requires participation and perseverance. We recognize that God is doing the leading and we are following his path. Scriptures give us a way to trace the lines to come up with a bigger picture of what God's plan is for our life. We do that by following scripture. That's, our, that's how we can trace the lines. That's how we can follow his will. <clears throat> um, there is no boasting about what we accomplish in step one, doing justice, and step two, loving mercy. There's, there's no boasting in that because it is Christ that is in us that makes that even possible. So the opposite of walking humbly with God is running with pride. Pride is a seldom decay from within. We don't even know it sometimes when it's happening. The way we did things in the old days was better than today. So pride. Oh, I know much better than those idiots on TV. So pride. <clears throat> we wouldn't want to admit it, but somehow we think we're something a little bit better than the next guy. Pride has the conviction of what we think we deserve, and yet it falls far short from what God desires for us. It is with a profound sense of gratitude that we walk humbly, close with God. Step three has to be authentic for the other two steps to work. Only after we walk humbly with God can we implement the divine test. The, the divine test can be used in any situation we may encounter. And that's why I was saying this one verse in Micah is all you. You've got the three steps. Do you remember that, uh, that popular saying in the 80s? Was, uh, what would Jesus do? That came right after the, the fish on the back of the car. You know, the symbol. It was so popular it even became a fashion statement. And that, that whole kind of thinking wasn't brand new. 
It actually came from Charles M. Shelton's 1889 book, In His Steps. That's a fantastic book I recommend. It, it has over 50 million copies printed. And it, is, it ranks among the top printed books in the world as far as numerics. That means people are interested in what Jesus would do, right? <laughs> it's, it, so what I'm saying today is, is kind of like that, I mean, it's a little bit expanded. The divine test is an expanded version 2.0. So it asks the questions, in my situation, what is the justice in God's eyes? In my situation, is there mercy revealing God's love? In my situation, is my walk authentic? When I was a kid, uh, we moved around and off that. And I was a new kid. And I was very familiar with being bullied. My knee jerk reaction was to respond by fighting. And it always ended me up in the principal's office. I was driven by anger and fear. So I know how hard it is to let go of negative forces that drive us. But being bound to a life of anger and fear is not the way to live. The three steps found in Micah 6 8 improves our vision of God's bigger picture for us. It provides us a way to let go of the negative forces that seem to control our minds and our hearts. We can begin a fresh journey with God, step by step, doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly with God. I feel like today that I have been blessed to be with you. I feel like you have it going on, and I don't even know you. But I feel like you know exactly what I'm talking about. And so our message today that we get from God, from his word. It's just a, a ratification of what we've been doing. Hang in there. Keep doing it. The work is important. And God is with you. And is at me. And I'm happy to see the doors open. Hang on to what you have. Cherish it. Don't get too proud about your heritage. But treasure those traditions. Treasure the symbols and things that you do knowing that they have meaning and purpose that they have a transformative power in people's lives. You have been doing a good work. Stick with it. For I am with you, Jesus says. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, <coughs> always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. <coughs>
today to, to use those three steps this week. Try it out, give it a spin. And see if it improves your bigger picture of what God has for your life. Please receive this blessing. May the God of peace be with you as you journey. May he make you of one mind in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.